Everyone is moving towards sustainable sources of energy. And even manufacturers want to get in on the game and reduce their carbon footprint. They can start by reducing the overall waste that is produced and because of which the subtractive manufacturing that most of the manufacturers used to use. Now subtractive manufacturing is where one block of a raw material produces one output of a product by chiseling out or eliminating the material which is not required. Now there's a lot of waste created here because of which everyone is slowly transitioning towards 3D printing. In this video, let's talk about the different technologies involved in 3D printing. We'll also talk about the different ways or materials that can be used in 3D printing, talk about the advantages and disadvantages of 3D printing. Now there are three types of 3D printing technologies. The first one is sintering, the second one is smelting, and the third is stereolithography. In the first one, there's powder which is melted, not to the point it melts completely into a liquid format, but to a point where it is able to stick to other particles and then an object is created. The second process which is smelting, as the name suggests, melts this powder to its liquid format and then creates the object as it goes. The moment it cools down, the object is formed. In the third process, which is stereo lighting, the particles are exposed to a certain wavelength of light. This wavelength of light interacts with the particles to mold it according to the shape of the desired process. There are five types of 3D printing methods, the first one of which is binder jetting. In binder jetting, small polymer particles or metal particles are placed on a base subject and then an adhesive is applied on top of it and then on top of that the second polymer or the metal object is placed. So these are fine particles which get placed on top of each other and are stuck together with the help of an adhesive. This is binder jetting. The second process is direct energy deposition. In this process, the materials like polymer or metal are fused together using a laser or an electric arc and they are built vertically up. So stacks are created and then they are put together. In this, there is no adhesive use. These particles get fused to each other in real time. The third process is called as material extrusion or fused deposition molding. In this process, a spool of polymer or metal is subjected through an heated head and as it cools down as it comes out it creates a base for the new material to be deposited on so you can start at the base and you can go up this might be familiar to you guys if you've used a glue gun which has a stick goes through a heated material and then melts and forms a base that's the same thing that we're discussing here the fourth process is material jetting it's very similar or the process is very similar to our printers at home or in offices but the only difference is, in this case, printer head is ejecting superheated metal onto a subject and then an object is created. The only difference between this sort of 3D printing and others is you need a water soluble base so that once the structure is created, you can wash it off. So you need a base to outline with material jetting and only after that, you'll have a 3D structure. The fifth and last type of 3D printing is called power bed fusion. In this, a large container is filled with the raw materials or the powder which is required for the output product. It can be polymer or metal particles which can be contained in this container. Then a laser is subjected at different wavelengths so that the particles fuse together and form the object. Then you just lift up the object from the powder. That's why it's called the power bed fusion. This is quite effective and I've seen this process happen the only challenge here is you don't see the output till it's completed, but when you do get to see it, it's amazing to watch. The BBC was given exclusive access to the first 3D printed school in Madagascar. Now that we know what are the different technologies and different ways of 3D printing, let's start with the advantages. First is, it's very cost effective. When I say cost effective, it's because you need a smaller amount of raw materials to produce your output product without creating more waste, using less energy. Second is, it's easier for startups to invest in this energy is because you do not need much space to create the objects. And when you run startup, you're creating prototypes and creating those small nifty things at your house or your disposal or at your startup makes it much more easier. The next advantage is it's completely customizable. You do not need to know much about 3D printing. If you have a blueprint, you have the schematics, you can get it done. And the last and foremost, very precise materials that are required, which are hardly available outside, can be used to make the parts or the product which is required by you specifically. So you don't need to depend on any other vendors and you can create parts or specific items at home when and where you want. 3D printer forged this out of plastic. Now that we know the advantages, it's also important to understand the disadvantages. And the first and the most important factor why 3D printing is not so generalized or standardized into manufacturing is because 
3D printed articles lose their strength. About 10 to 50% of strength is lost in a 3D printed article. Only if it is a metal that is being used, then the integrity is maintained and the strength is maintained. But if you're using any objects like plastic or the polymers, the strength is not really guaranteed. The second is, it's not really cost effective if you're using it on a large scale. Because if you're doing it on a large scale, it's not really time specific. It's because a 3D printed object takes a lot of time to produce. It's because it goes layers after layers. So it takes a lot of time to produce one part or one article out of the raw material. Then is the limitation in accuracy. It is all dependent on the material that is being used and also the machine that is being used. Because if you're not using the right material for the machine, then you might not get the output that you want. But you have the right material, but not the right machine. It will not work as well. And then there is post-processing. In post-processing, you have to take out the support structures that you use for your 3D printed article, or also the raw material, which has now got stuck to the main article. So 3D printing has not really reached its peak, even after being into existence for decades now. But manufacturers like Porsche are perfecting this technology to create crankshafts for their cars. These crankshafts are stronger, lighter, and use lesser materials. So even manufacturers in automobiles are moving towards this space and as the technology develops and we understand this technology better, maybe 3D printing will just be the future. This is Aurelius from Mashable India signing off.